friends. Good morning. How many of you love the Lord in here today? Can you give him praise? Could you put your hands together and say, God, thank you. Thank you for this moment in time. Thank you, Father, for another chance to be in your presence. Anybody feel like worshiping just a little bit?
worthy to be praised. I said that he's worthy to be praised. Good afternoon. I am Pastor Michael K. Moore, lead pastor here at Faith Chapel. And I bring all of you greetings on behalf of our congregation. And I want to extend a warm welcome to this family. I want to extend a warm welcome to all special guests, to dignitaries, to pastors and ministers. I also want to honor and acknowledge our officiant uh, for today, Reverend T. Ann Miller, a pastor of First Baptist Kingston Church. Man of God, we honor you and we honor those at First Baptist Kingston. <clears throat> to this family, I want you to know that you are and have been in our hearts. You have been in our prayers and will continue to be so. And I want to remind you of a promise that Jesus made. He said that throughout life, there would be times, there would be moments where we would find ourselves tired. We would find ourselves fatigued from carrying heavy burdens. But Jesus extended an invitation to us in those moments. He said that if we would come to him, he would give us rest for our souls. And family, that's my prayer for you today. My prayer is that through every song that is sung today, through every word of comfort that is given, that God would give you rest in your souls, that he would replenish you emotionally, that he would restore you mentally, that he would be a present help today in this time of trouble, not only today, but in the weeks and the months ahead. Amen? Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, our Father, we come now in the blessed name of Jesus. And Lord, how we love you, we praise you, we honor you. You are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy. You're Alpha and Omega, you're the beginning and the end, you're the first and the last. You are. You are, you are the great I am. And Lord, we come to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your tender loving kindness. Thank you for Brandon. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his legacy. Thank you for his love and thank you for his laughter. Thank you for lingering memories. But Lord, we just especially want to say thank you that this is not the end of the story. For Lord, you promised a place of no more heartache, a place of no more pain, a place where you would wipe all tears from our eyes. You've even given us assurances in your word that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, has not even entered the hearts and minds of men and women what great and wonderful things you have in store for those who love you. So Lord, we come to say thank you. Thank you for Brandon. And Lord, we come now to pray your blessings upon this family. We pray that you comfort them with the comfort that only you can give. Lord, put your loving arms of protection around them and Lord, may they sense your presence May they set your abiding peace, a peace that surpasses this world's understanding. And Lord, give them assurances that even now, you're right there with them. Lord, do what only you can do because you're able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything we can even imagine, think or ask for according to your Holy Spirit that works in and through us. So Lord, have your way. Lord, bless this family in ways that only you can. Lord, keep them in your care. Thank you for this great church, Faith Chapel. Thank you for all of these pastors. Thank you for Pastor Moore. And thank you for all of the ministers and pastors. And Lord, we in particular pray for Reverend T. N. Miller. As he shall come and minister in your word. Lord, use him in a mighty way. Lord, speak now. 
for we, your servants, are listening. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, keep us and keep this family in your care. And again, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for Brandon Smiley. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. Our New Testament scripture will be Revelation chapter 21, starting at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he said, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. Old Testament scripture, the 121st number of Psalms. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God.
neighbor. Ricky, Leandria Johnson told us to look to our neighbor. I looked to my neighbor and, and said, I got to come after that. She gave me a face like, but the spirit in the presence of the Lord is in this church. To Malik. The essence, Aaron Taylor. God is to Miss Carolita, to Brooke. 
God is. And especially to Brenda and Ricky, God is. To the family, friends, loved ones of Brandon, God is our refuge, our rock. And on behalf of a city, that I serve, allow me to first say one thing. Our hearts are truly broken and we grieve with this family. Now I'd like to share a story with y'all. A couple weeks back I got a text from Ricky. He invited me to come over and spend some time with him and his uncle and watch the game and just catch up. While there, we went deep in some conversations and eventually got around to including talking about his book, Stand By Your Truth. And so a few days later, I, I took a road trip down to Mobile this past Sunday. While on the road, I finished one book and literally began picking up this book about 9 a.m. By 11 a.m., I got a call with the devastating news about Brandon's passing. Uh, to be honest with you all, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe the awful news because I felt like that I had just spent so much time with Ricky, with his family, with Brandon, just in the beginning of this book. You see, in the first several chapters of that book, Brandon has such a major presence. Ricky takes you on this journey through his words, and that journey is tied to the love of his son. We often talk about a mother's love for her children, and I see and I feel the grief in this chapel with Ms. Brenda. But we sometimes overlook the relationship our men, our black men, our fathers, half of their black boys. It's a love that runs so strongly and it makes times like this even more difficult. But to the family and the friends and especially my friend Ricky, please heed these words you shared with me not so long ago. Stand by your truth. I can imagine, and I know times like these is not easy. Ricky, I definitely know that it's times like these as you reflect and you ask what if. It's easy to let this wash over you, to let this cloud your mind. But I want to tell you, I want to tell your family, you are a good father. A father would be quick to point at itself, to ask so many questions. And if I'm real with you, that's okay because that's what real men, real fathers do. But through all the trials, through all the tribulations, to all the heartache and grief that is in these pews with this family, it's not a time to point, it's not a time to blame. And although it hurts, I believe God's will will be done. We know that death has a way of affecting black families. I've seen it from my own family through our own tragedies. One or two things happened. It can pull you together or it can pull you apart. But I want to remind this family, this is not a time to fall for that trap of division. This is a time to stand collectively by this family's truth. And here's what I know to be true. The love and support of family, the care and admiration of community, those are the truths we stand on on behalf of this family and Brandon and the legacy he leaves. To this family, I know you wish you had more time with Brandon 
do not let the last seven days cast any doubt on your love. We are here to celebrate a life that blessed us, that blessed this family, that blessed this community, that blessed his daughter in so many ways. Brandon's stories continues with all of us. As I progress through Stand By My Truth, I learned that Brandon's favorite song, one of his favorite songs with Fleetwood's Mac, You Make Love and Fun. And Bill Withers' Lovely Day is the song Ricky would play while driving Brandon around, or simply when he picked him up from Atlanta and brought him back to Birmingham. Those two songs, those two songs tell the story of Brandon and his relationship with this beautiful family. And so I would encourage, I want, it's my desire, it's my prayer, that this family in all the days to come, even in a few days when it will be Brandon's birthday on the 7th, to lean on that optimism, to lean on that hope, and the comfort, and the comfort of those lyrics. Because I think Brandon would want that, because they were his truths. The city of Birmingham loves you. We stand with you and this family through your collective grief. We pray for your amended hearts. Thank you. Please put your hands together for Mr. Brandon Smiley. <laughs> Oh, this lady sit up in front of church and sing this little light of mine. Oh, I'm gone. I've been singing my mind. It's time to go home. My name is Brett Sia. We are headed into the zoo. Would you like to come with us? Come. Happy birthday, dear Brandy. Try? You got a girlfriend? Yeah, I got a girlfriend. Wow. Dad had that conversation with y'all yet? About what? Girl. Y'all had uh, the conversation yet? Nah. It's gonna be a little awkward. Would y'all rather have it with me? Yeah. All right, man. This is what I'm Easy gonna do. to talk to. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the only thing y'all need to know about women. And the key to between us. Don't tell dad about this. All right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you right. for letting me borrow the car. All right, love you. Love you too. Hey, don't play no, uh, don't play, don't play no hip hop in that car. That car has a spirit in it. Yes, sir. And if you have to fart, get off on the exit Roll the and do a courtesy walk. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, man, I'm trying to get a car. What kind of car? Any kind of car, as long as it's rolling. I figure if I had a car, I can get a second hustle. Got you. Like, have you thought about getting a co-signer? 
That's why I'm talking to you. Cause my credit's so bad, I can't even check out library book. Homie, man, if you get me as a co they're gonna charge you double. Hey, hey Mr. Know. Brandon, nice to meet you. Hey, Brandon, nice to meet you. Nah, I'm gonna tell you right off the bank, though, Mr. Lawson. Now, Brandon's credit is a little exaggerated. Rating of one to ten, what would you say your score? About a three point. Three point five. <laughs> if all else fails, you can co-sign for me. What? Come on. Oh, Co-sign. Co Co yeah. Who called you the stove? I don't have to steal. Now, it ain't what he probably won't. It ain't what I would get for myself, but a car is a car. Like, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car, but Brandon, you get this car. <laughs> As an older brother, I feel it's my responsibility to talk to my little brothers and guide them in the right direction so they don't make the same decisions that I made. Yeah. So what happened with the lawnmower business? We ain't had no lawnmower. How you gonna cut around with that lawnmower? We ain't even think about that. Do you love your father? Mm. Have you told him that? You gonna make me tell him? I'm not gonna make you do anything. I'm just curious. Do you love your son? Absolutely. Have you told him that? Not lately. Mm. You guys really are father and son, aren't you? Do you need to hear that from your father? Not really. Uh, I kind of ruined the moment. Too mushy. <laughs> It'd be good too much right now. You know when you had told him if I got a new spot, you know you had some furniture from when you had redecorated the house. OK, so what do you have already? I got a bed, two mattresses, and some uh, pots and pans. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Atlanta? I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, you know. Roll Tide. You know, I had to get used to it out here, man. Roll Tide. You know, this traffic crazy out here, man. We know we ain't used to no traffic like this back in Birmingham. I'd have turned down some job off because of this traffic. They say, you got to be here at 8.35. I said, where is that? They said, midtown. I said, you know what? No. Said, I ain't going to be able to do it, player. And then back in Birmingham, our crackheads do normal stuff. You know, we got normal crackheads back in Birmingham. You know, we might take your, they might steal your stick off your tag, sell you a pregnant poodle. You know what I'm saying? Tell you it's a pit bull puppy. You know, simple crackhead stuff. You know, they keep it classy. You know, y'all crackheads burning down whole highways out here. Okay, how y'all let one crackhead make four million people late to work? How? I remember back when you stayed in, you know what I'm saying, these little apartments on the south side of, of Birmingham. It's like way before y'all came around. Like, we didn't really have that much growing up. And it seemed like those were the best times of my life, you know what I'm saying, when he was raising us at that young age when he didn't have that much. Y'all think y'all feel like y'all rich now. I thought we was balling. I remember asking you, I was like, we rich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we rich. And you said, no, we rich in spirit. And that always stuck with me. I just want to thank you for making my our childhood like special. And I, I really didn't really understand why he was so hard on me until I grew up and became a man. And if I wouldn't have got that, I wouldn't even be half the man I am today without that. I appreciate that and I needed that. And if I ever have a kid, I'm raising them the same way. I'm going to anoint you as a comedian. <laughs> in the <laughs> Shut up, boy. Shut up, Shut up, boy. Shut up, Shut up. <laughs> My name Lil' Darryl. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Storm. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> Bye-bye. Sergeant Willie Perdue, and I'm here to bring greetings from the 781st Transportation Unit out of Fort Deposit, Alabama, 
in Montgomery, Alabama. I'll tell you a little bit about O'Brandon. I was Brandon's squad leader, and uh, I was his uh, platoon sergeant for a short time before I went over to uh, Afghanistan. Uh, Brandon rode with me back and forth to drill every month for about two years. Uh, Brandon was a very, very obedient child, well groomed, real sharp and smart, physical fit, and well mannered. Brandon loved to drive my car. I first met him. So he was, his cousins were bringing them all the way to Fort Deposit, which was 132 miles from Birmingham. And they would stay there sometime all day waiting on him. So my first sergeant, first sergeant Snipes and Captain Bird told me, say, Purdue, why don't you let him ride with you back and forth since you live in Birmingham? Uh, Fort Deposit is my hometown, right? Okay, so I got to know the little kid and uh, we talked. On the way back, he didn't say much. And, uh, so the next month rolled around, got ready to go. He told me to pick him up at his grandma's house in Avondale, so I found a way and I picked him up, and we headed to Birmingham. Stopped off in Hoover. So I get gas, I, feel him, I was driving my Jaguar then. He, was, he loved that Jaguar. And I was pumping gas, and I noticed the door open, and I'm watching him. I thought he was going in the service station. He went around and got in the driver's side and got on the steering wheel. <laughs> so I'm watching him, I said, I love the keys. I said, I hope this kid don't take off, you know? so. <laughs> After I filled up and I went around to the car, and he said, hey, you sleepy, right? I'm like, no, I'm supposed to be. He said, oh, yeah, you sleepy. You look sleepy, you know? So I said, he want to drive. So I said, okay, he can drive. So we jumped up on the interstate, 65 South, headed down towards Montgomery. And so I, I kind of did know those off a little. So I noticed the car sound changed. And uh, I said, I looked over there, he ran a 90, you know? I said, I didn't say nothing, I didn't say that. He said, hey, sorry. I said, what? He said, this thing got 150 on it. You think it'll get it? <laughs> I'm like, man, please don't run 150. No, nah, don't do it. Please don't do it, all right? I said, then I asked him, I said, hey, Brandon. I said, you got a driver's license? He said, I used to. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> but we hit it off for two years. In the, and the, kid, and the kid obeyed me. He never got out of line. I took him. We, on Sunday nights, we'd come home. And I would take him over to the house. He would eat dinner with me and my wife. And he'd get in my wife. He's yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, yo, ma'am. I'm just checking him out. he eat two or three plates of food, you know. And get up and fix his own plate and stuff. I'm like, hey, he all right. He okay. But you guys raised a great child. A great child. Mr. Mr. Smiley, Miss Green, he was wonderful. He, was, he had a look about him sometimes. He was peaceful. He had a, when he wasn't smiling and picking on someone, he was still. He'd be at a still moment sometimes. Sometimes I would catch him off just thinking. And I would say, hey, man, what's up? You know, I just need to think sometimes. You know, I, I got a lot of things I need to think about. And I'm like, oh, okay. And leave him alone. And I would take him to the next town, which was called Greenville, Alabama. That's south going toward Mobile, right? And uh, I'd say, hey, Brandon, uh, we stayed in the motel there. And I would say, hey, if you go anywhere, let me know. Let me know who you're riding with, because a lot of other young guys was with, with, with us too. And he would always obey me. If he went out to one of the local clubs, he would tell me who he would ride with or who we were going with. Sometimes they'd come in one or two o'clock in the morning and he'd wake me up. I said, oh, man, she told him to call me, you know. But uh, <laughs> he was good. He was a great kid. And when I got the news last Sunday afternoon, I only had one son myself. And that tore me up like that was, it was my son. I hated that. I hadn't seen Brandon. I saw Brandon back in November. I bumped into him at a service station, pumping gas. And so I, I said, that looked like Brandon Smiley. But I wasn't sure. I'd never seen him with a beard. It been, it, I hadn't seen Brandon since 2013 until a few months ago. Had the full beard. So he was on one pump side. I was on the pump side. So I'm peeping at him, looking at him. I said, that sure look like him, but I ain't sure. I said, he wouldn't grow no beard. He's too sharp for that. He ain't growing no beard. So uh, he walked off, and I looked at him from behind his head. You know, Brandon had the ears, right? So I said, yeah, yeah, that's him. That's him. That's the ears. So I went in there, and I said, hey, Brandon, we're smiling. What's going on, man? Yo, oh, Sergeant Purdue, that's you. That's you, Sarge. I said, yeah, that's me, man. I heard you retired. So I've been retired 10 years now. Yo, oh, Lord, I love you. Come here, give me a hug. I said, Brandon, please don't kiss me. You know, <laughs> he was just all over. He was oh, I love you. How Miss Purdue? I said, I said, she fine. She still cooking? I said, yeah, come over and eat. I'll be over there. I'll be over there, okay? I love you. You're not lying to each other. You know, so 
that's the last time I seen him. You know? And it was, it's, it's good that he had that respect for me to obey me. You know, he didn't know me. We, we hit it off just like that. And I seen him 10 years later. Last thing he told me, he loved me. And I, and I appreciate that. I thank you, y'all. A lot of you families remember had your hands on him. I know y'all used to pick him up and drop him off way south Alabama all the time. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you this last one. I, every time I got ready to drop him off on Sundays, I had to drop him off at three or four different houses. McCullough, uh, East Birmingham, uh, Hoover. We went to Hoover. One night he drove and I woke up. I'm looking, all I see is big houses. I'm like, what in the H is this boy got me at? You know? <laughs> And I look around, I said, Brandon, you're trying to get us put in jail. I didn't know it was your house. <laughs> I said, you ain't going to stop till you get me arrested, right? <laughs> you better get out of here, man. He said, oh, Pops, he called you Pops. Pops, stay here. I'm like, oh, okay, we cool, we cool. So thank you all, and it's a pleasure. Yeah. everybody. I'm Brooke, and um, I just want to say a couple things to him. To the love of my life, my best friend, my listening ear, my rider, the person that would definitely make sure I felt special. You totally messed me up with this one, baby. You left me when we had so many plans and so many dreams. I'd never be the same. Waking up without you is horrible. Going to sleep knowing you're not coming home to wake me up is unusual. You was my routine. I try so hard to seek understanding and comfort, but I can't. You was my rock and my everything, and nothing feels right. Last conversation we had, you told me that you promised to take care of me for life and that you got me for life. I know that is still true and nobody could ever take your place. And I love you so much, Brandon. everyone for Spree being here today and for all of the really sweet condolences for my family and the friends. Um, I'd like to start off with saying that I think we all know that my brother was an absolute light. Um, he lit up any room that he would walk into um, and he wasn't just funny, he was kind and he had a heart of gold and he was always there for me. Um, I wish I could receive, sorry, I wish I could receive another random text message from him or hear his laugh again or just talk to him. Um, um, good afternoon. I just wrote something short. Brandon was always the goofy big brother of the family. You can never sit with him or even look at him in a serious situation. He always just makes you want to laugh. The only time I could take him serious is when he's mad. <laughs> Brandon was the greatest big brother I could ever ask for. Brandon was my big brother when I was a baby. He was my big brother when I grew bigger than him. And even though he's not with us today, he's gonna always be my big brother. And I love you forever and miss you. My brother Brandon, he used to take us to the movies every weekend, me, Malik, and Aaron. And we would be so excited because it was the only time that my dad would let us stay out late, as long as we was with Brandon. 
And after we left the movies, he would take us to Waffle House and we would still be out late and we would get to come home at 12 a.m. just because we was with Brandon. But every time we left the movies, while we were driving back home into the neighborhood, Brandon would turn the heat up in the car. He would roll up the windows and he would lock the windows and then he would fart. <laughs> And we would have to suffer the whole rest of the way ride home. And he would, he would make sure it was a slow, a slow ride through the neighborhood. And I remember one time, me and Brandon had a prank week, because we always did pranks on each other. And we had a week of pranks where we went back and forth pranking each other. And then I asked my dad, because I'm like, I got to get him good, because he keep getting me. He keep getting me, so I gotta get him good. I asked my dad, what should I do? And my dad was like, just get a whole bunch of condiments, get some hot sauce, honey, get a whole bunch of shampoo, conditioner, and pour it in his sheets. So I laced his sheets with all of those things, a whole bunch of different everything. And I knew he was gonna go to sleep in his bed, so I seen him the next morning, and I was like, I hope you slept well. And he started laughing, and. He was like, yeah, you got me. You got me real good. But the next morning when I woke up, I had a mannequin that he cut all the hair off. He tied it to the ceiling fan. So when I woke up, the mannequin was just spinning around <laughs> with no hair above me. And I knew, I said, I can't get you. Like, you always gonna do me better. But me and Brandon, we had a relationship where we, we wouldn't talk every day. We wouldn't even talk every week. But every time I seen him, every time I talked to him, it, it was just like no time had passed. I seen him on Christmas. That was uh, our last day we saw him, um, Christmas Day. And I'm just thankful that I got to see my brother one last time. My brother's finally at peace. And I'm grateful to have been his little sister. And I just want to say from your siblings, we love you, Brandon. And CIP, Comedy in Peace. So hilarious, creative, talented, headstrong, charismatic, charming, and humble are just a few words that can describe Brandon. Most people that have met him for the first time have seen him perform and will say, oh my gosh, he's so funny, but he was way deeper than that. Not only was he a comedian, but he was a creative genius that could have gone so far if he had the chance. Other than these amazing traits, he was my big brother, my protector. I can't even count how many times he told me, if someone ever puts their hands on you, you better call me. I always knew he had my back and that he would protect me through the good and the bad. Growing up with him was one of the craziest things a young girl could experience. From getting chased around the house with his Freddy Krueger mask, to him teaching me how to do a backflip on the trampoline. There was never a dull moment. I always looked up to him, no matter what he did, he was still kind of my role model. He was perfect to me. It wasn't until I got older and got a better understanding of life that I realized he wasn't perfect and he had his own struggles. Through the ups and downs and arguments and makeups, I still had the utmost respect for him as a person. I remember growing up thinking that I was gonna get my heart broken by someone that like cheated on me or something. But no, Brandon, you broke my heart. Will you pass? <sighs> Not having you around it anymore makes my heart feel empty. I've never felt this amount of pain in my life. Sorry, y'all. I remember at my college graduation party less than a year ago, you told me you were gonna get better because of me. You wanted me to be so successful and you wanted me to have a health, you wanted to have a healthier lifestyle for me. I broke down and told you that I'm tired of seeing you struggle with your problems and that I didn't want to see you end up where you are now. Brandon, I know you tried. You tried your hardest and I can't fault you for that. All I ever wanted was for you to be happy. So hopefully you found peace. 
Please look over me, Mommy, Daddy, Ricky, DSNS, Malik, Aaron, Grandma, and the rest of the family. I promise that I'll do everything you told me to do, become successful, and chase my dreams. To my mommy. <laughs> you were the best mommy anyone could ask for. You've been through a lot. But you never let that stop you from being a good mommy. <sighs> Brandon really loves you. And I know he wouldn't have made it that far without you. <laughs> to my daddy, you stepped up and took on a father role when you didn't have to. You took Brandon in like he was your own and never second guessed it. He appreciated you more than you know. And he would tell me all the time that you're a great dad and you taught him how he should be as a father to Storm. And to Storm, I will always protect you. And I won't let anything happen to you. I love you so much. And to Ricky, the essence, Malik, and Aaron, thank you for being there for him and showing him love and making him happy. Brandon, I love you forever, and I can't wait to see you again. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for uh, supporting us, supporting Brandon, uh, supporting the family, all of the prayers and wishes that you guys have uh, extended to us. We really appreciate it. Um, I want to focus on, if we can, uh, the happy, happier times with Brandon. But I want to preface that with kind of how we started in life, basically, uh, you know, as a unit. Um, Brandon was born February 7th, 1990. Um, we were young people. I was in college. Uh, my wife was here in Birmingham, and uh, Ricky was young as well. We were all very young people, so we, we grew together. Uh, we, we literally grew up. We were children trying to raise a child, so we learned a lot during these years. I'm a better father because of Brennan. I'm a better person because of Brennan. And he taught me a lot, and I just want to continue to extend that to my family, my daughter, everyone that I come in touch with. I just want to make sure that, that I'm the best person I could be. And, uh, and Brandon helped to teach me that. I learned a lot through that. Um, to kind of give you guys a, a little background on his childhood, um, he spent his time between Birmingham and Atlanta. Um, the first eight years of his life, he was here in Birmingham. From eight to uh, 14, he was in Atlanta with us. Uh, and then from 14 to 18, he was back here in Birmingham at uh, Spain Park High School. Um, so he was, one funny story I can tell you guys, uh, he played football. Um, this was eight, nine, and 10. He was on the football team. And you know, I used to go to practice every day. Uh, I literally was out there every day. And they got into this bull ring. Uh, in, in, in football, it's like when all the, players, all the players get around one player, he gets in the middle. So all the players, the coach will ident identify a player to go and attack the guy in the middle, right? So, so they will point to a certain player and Brandon was in the middle at this particular time. Every time the player came running after me, he was supposed to attack the guy. Brandon would get out, run out the way every time. He would just like jump to the side. And so uh, this kept happening over and over and over again. And the coaches, uh, they were hesitant to put him back in the bull ring. Uh, they said, Brandon's not going to do it. And so I asked Brandon one day, I said, Brandon, why do you keep jumping to the side? He said, I'm not crazy. I'm not letting these guys run full speed at me and knock me down. So he was very smart, very funny. And, and that's just, that just testifies to how Brandon, he was smart, and he's, 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 he's just... He's just Brandon. You have to be around him to understand uh, how he's unpredictable. Uh, he's funny, and he's, he's just, he's under, he gets the, the moment. He understands the moment. And uh, that's just one story I want to tell you guys. I do want to also say the video that, that went up earlier, that took a lot of my material out, because it really encapsulated a lot of things about Brandon that we wanted to uh, confer as well. And so I'll just end with this. Again, as I said earlier, Brandon, you made me a better father and a better man, and thank you for that. Love you.
To God be the glory. We greet you this afternoon in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're grateful for this opportunity, which is a sad, but we thank God for it. It's hard, but I got to do what needs to be done. I must work the work of him that sent me. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come this moment thanking you for this opportunity. God, we ask now that you would speak to us and speak through us, that these your people will hear and see you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Before I go any further, let me say thanks to this great pastor here at Faith Chapel. Thank you for opening your doors to allow us to come. And then let me say thanks to my church family for coming and supporting me and supporting the church. I'm grateful for this opportunity to be a part of this celebration. I don't want to act like I'm not dignified, but I like to have church. And for what Deandria and this young lady done all have done for me, I can't help but to praise the Lord. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, hit B flat for me. There is so much that the Lord has done for me. He set me free Oh, all of my burden He helped me to bear All of my problems He helped me to share I can't pay the loan I like to tell him Brandon has made an impact on a lot of you all. And as I was sitting there listening to all of the accolades that was given, it was just good to know him. He have his classmates here. I want to recognize the Woodlawn High School. He have his classmates, and we thank God for it. Let me give you a rundown real quick, and I promise you I won't be long. It was the second Sunday in November. We had just finished bringing the message of our 11 o'clock services. And after opening the doors of the church, 
over to my right said Brandon. And when the doors was open, he came. And when he came, he was by himself. He was the only one joined the church that Sunday. And when we took him in, I said, Brandon, you have something you want to say? He said, yes, Reverend. I want to give my life back to Christ. I said, I said, God bless you, man. It was just like the whole church just went up because it was Brandon. And after we took him in and everything, I told him, I said, now, Brandon, next Sunday, we're going in the water. Well, next Sunday came. And there was no Brandon there. I got worried because I didn't understand, didn't know why he didn't show up. So the next following Sunday, we put the water back in the pool. And there was no Brandon. I told one of the members, I say, now, do you know how to get in touch with Brandon? She said, yes, I do. I say, you call him right now and tell him to make his way to church because he got to go in the water. The enemy thought he had him, but he couldn't touch him. She called him, and I told him to get there. You saw it on the screen. Brandon showed up. And I took him down in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I just felt good at that point. You see, what the devil meant for bad, God turned it into good. I didn't see Brandon anymore. He gradually would come, but when he did come to church, he would sit over there by his uncles there, and he was just quiet. But this particular Sunday, about three Sundays ago, Brandon came to the pool pit and said, Reverend, I'm going to try to make it as often as I can. I knew that he was dealing with situations like all of us in here. I realized that he had his share of life's ups and downs, but he was pressing his way. I want to help somebody in here. People like that, I, I take pride in helping them because you never know who you're helping in the time that you're doing it in. I have a slogan at First Baptist and it says, be careful of the hand you hold because you never know who hand you'll fall in. I held on to Brandon Smiley. I, I, it was something about him. I knew he needed help. He needed some spiritual guidance. And I was giving the best that I could to show him that in spite, man, of what you're going through, you ain't the only one yes, sir. going through life, health, and death. See, it, it, it vexes me when people act like they don't have no problem. They never did anything wrong. They never gone anywhere. It vexes me when you think you've been saved all of your life. But the Bible said, Jesus said that he that is without sin, you cast the first stone. And none of us can talk down anybody in here because all of us got some shout coming. And it's by the grace of God, Paul said, it's by the grace of God, I am where I am. So I couldn't let him down. I couldn't let him down because I knew he was fighting. Some folks would never have ever looked at Brandon, would never have given him a second chance, but it was something about him. I still wanted to encourage him. And every now and then, all of us need some encouragement. All of us need to be pat on the shoulder and say, hang on in there. And this time, and I'm getting ready to close, this time last Sunday was last Sunday. Brandon probably was getting ready to come to church. But, 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 but I want to read a passage of Scripture. And I want you to listen to it real carefully, what I'm about to read. It is found in Jude, first chapter. 
And it reads for the 24th verse. Listen to what it says. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. I, I want to talk for just a few moments and I'll be up out of here. He wouldn't let me fall. When everybody else was looking down, he wouldn't let me fall. Last, last Sunday, I guess the Satan said, well, you ain't going back there no more. I got you. But when I read this passage of scripture, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, I thank God that he stepped in right on time. What the devil was trying to take him out, God said, I got Brandon myself. What you trying to do, I've already got him. And I'm closing. I'm glad to inform you that when Brandon closed his eyes, he went to the presence of the Lord. And I'm glad to inform you that he is all right now. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more ups and downs. He fought a good fight. Even at 32, he kept the faith. Now he's in the presence of the Lord. I close with this word. Be careful, y'all. If you're going to throw some stones, check your own self out too. Because all of us got some issues in our lives. I know the Lord. Will make a way. Yes, he will. I'm not going to let you shout, make you shout. Elangerham did all that, but I want to say this. Listen. I need some help. I need some help. I know the Lord. Will make a way. I'm old school. Yes, he will.
make a way. Lord, he make a way. Some of you sitting up in here right now, you know he will. If I was you, I'd stand on my feet right now and, and say, Lord, I want to thank you for bringing me that far. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. giving honor to God. This is Brandon's beautiful daughter, Storm. She looked just like him. Um, she hit me. First of all, I just want to say uh, thank God for my life. Um, thank God for Brandon. Thank God for Brenda and Taurus. You know, every, every, everything that, um, everybody that uh, participated in his life, all of the meals, 
basketball, guitars, the football. I know about that bull ring. <laughs> uh, all of his high school friends, uh, college students, uh, everybody from Alabama State, uh, everybody from uh, University of Alabama schools he attended, um, Faith Chapel. Pastor, man, thank you. You came over there, stopped by the house, walked in the front door and just hugged everybody when they was just raw and uncut. You and, you know, and, and Pastor Brian, First Baptist Church, Kingston, my son's church, Pastor Miller, where he was raised. <laughs> Pastor King, you know, being that you been through this yourself, I remember when your son passed away. Pastor Brian, I was sitting there with you and your daughter passed away, Sade. So I'm, I'm in the club with y'all. So I, now I understand exactly what, what y'all went through and how y'all feel. Pastor Solomon, um, always good to have you. Darlene McCoy, my friend and colleague from our uh, Radio One. Darlene, I love you. Thank you for that beautiful song this morning. That's my little sister, Darlene McCoy. My other little sister, Leandria. Leandria Johnson, thank you so much. Woodlawn High School alumni, uh, my fraternity brothers, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, uh, everybody that came over uh, from Atlanta, uh, thank y'all. Uh, Brenda and Tara's neighbors, they can't drove all the way down, and everybody. We have duo people from Cleveland, from the 216. So uh, a lot of us in uh, George, everybody that came from all over the country. Uh, in Detroit, uh, man, God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much uh, for sharing in this life. And, um, and I absolutely love y'all. Uh, Miss Lurleen, he absolutely loved you. Them little pancakes that you make in that little cast iron skillet in that kitchen with that alligator syrup. Everybody moused up. Stand up, Ms. Lurley. I want you, this is great, grandmother. Stand up. That's Ms. Lurleen Corbin. She don't play no games. She didn't play with none of us. She'll, she'll let you know. And uh, she wanted for Ms. Ravis. Uh, stand his grandparents' mama, Pumpkin, Ms. Ravis. I mean, Ms. Ravis, mama. Why can y'all stand up? Grandparents. Thank you. All of his, all of his beautiful aunts on both sides, where y'all at? Stand up, aunties, aunties and uncles. It, it takes a community. Uh, Gary. <laughs> Thank you. You you're more than just a morning show co-host. You you babysitted Brandon when I had to go out of town. And you too, Miss Janie. Nice to all my kids. And uh yeah, they there she is right there. Stand up, Miss Janie, and uh my morning show. Y'all can stand up the morning show. Ninety-eight-seven Kiss FM. So thank y'all so much. Uh, uh, and we gonna have to in this 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 last recognition. I want y'all to give Brandon's wonderful, awesome mother who laid down and labored and gave birth to him. A big, a real standing ovation. That's a real, the real champ. Stand up, brother. Turn around and wave. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, thank everybody so much uh, for coming out. Uh, Reverend, you have been, God bless y'all. And y'all keep, make sure y'all keep all of us lifted up in prayer, it's tough. As Jay say, when the flowers have withered, when the cards and the calls stop, man, we stuck uh, with those memories and that, and that grief. So uh, God bless y'all so much. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I just wanna say thank you.
As we prepare now to depart from here, again, we want to thank you all and all those that played a part in this services. Again, Pastor Mike, thank you. Faith Chapel and all, John, Brian Kevin, and Solomon, thank all of you all for your support in this hour. And First Baptist, thank you from the depths of my heart, earning all of y'all for showing up today. At this time, the funeral directors will come and as we prepare to go. All the flower bearers, all the flower ladies, will you please come? Just want to praise you. Would a director's come? Yeah. I need all of you to play a part in this part right there. Come on, bless you. Well, just, just want to praise you forever and yet. All the flower bearers, will you come? For all you done for me. Come on here. Blessing. Blessings and glory and honor. 